an entitled jerk demands that I give up my seat on a coach that I was taking across the country, claiming that he wants it more and that him and his wife deserve my seats no matter what. But I decided that enough was enough. So I stood up for myself and I shut this jerk down right where he stood. And I've honestly never felt better about putting somebody in their place in my life. Here's what happened. Okay, so this was a couple of months ago and I was on my way to London and I took a night coach. For those unaware, a coach is like a luxury bus with seat belts, leather seats, Wi-Fi, plugs, toilets, and a lot of stuff like that. Well, like most coaches, you have to book tickets in advance, but you can pay extra to reserve a seat. Any other seat is first come, first serve. Where I get on is the first stop of the coach's route to London, so it's free reign to pick any seat not marked as reserved. I then go all the way back and choose to sit at the emergency exit. It has the most legroom, and there's some distance from the seat in front of me, so I can put the tray down and not break my neck watching a film on my tablet. Now, this was a 10-hour journey, and I was enjoying my time watching some films on my tablet and munching on some snacks for the journey. I'm so used to traveling on buses and coaches, so this honestly wasn't anything new. Well, three hours in, at this point, it's now midnight, and the coach arrives at a station to let a lot of people on. At the time, I didn't notice that someone was trying to talk to me. It was a mix of me being focused on the film, as well as my headphones being noise-canceling. He gave me a slight shake to get my attention, which he did. I took off my headphones and he asked me, can I sit there please? Now I thought he wanted to sit next to me and he asked me because my rucksack and my shopping bag was on the other seat. I'm not antisocial, so I wasn't going to say no, but I decided to ask just to clarify. I said to him, oh, do you want me to move my stuff for you to sit down? This guy looks at me and says, no, I mean, can I have both of these seats for me and my wife? I looked at him and I said, no, because I'm currently sitting here. He said to me, yes, but we want to sit there, so give me these seats. I looked at him and I said, you're not being funny, man, but I also want to sit here. That's the reason I sat here. But this guy just seriously wasn't getting it. He said to me, I know, but I want to sit there now, so move, please. I asked him where I was supposed to sit then, and he told me the seats in front of us are free. So I responded by saying, well, there you go. You can sit there then. But this guy responded by saying, but that's not where I want to sit. I then responded quite bluntly. I said to him, look, I'm really sorry, but I'm not going to move from where I am just because you want to sit here with your wife, okay? If you reserve these seats, then fair enough. I would absolutely move, but these seats aren't reserved. So no, if you'll excuse me, I'm not going to move. At that point, I put my headphones back on and that was the end of that. I saw him walk down to the front of the coach. No idea if he went to complain to the driver or what, but I didn't care as I knew I was in the right. Sure, I was quite rude at the end, but I wasn't going to give up my spot just because someone asked me to when I had already settled down in the seat. A couple minutes later, I did see him and his wife come back up to me, but they walked past and sat behind me. And what's funny is that they glared at me as they walked by. Now, it should be worth mentioning that he didn't have any visible or physical disabilities. If he needed legroom for disabled access, he should have said something. But even then, that's what the front of the coach is for. It is literally for disabled access. In fact, him and his wife were way skinnier than me, and I'm a pretty fat guy. So, for the last six hours, they just sat behind me. I didn't hear what they were saying, but a part of me jokingly thought that they were planning to take over my seats if I went up and used the bathroom. But I never did, so thankfully, I never found out. Wow, seriously? Like, what is wrong with people? Like, they could have gone about asking for this seat in several other ways. They could have asked nicely. They could have looked around for any other seats. They could have done anything other than the way they approached this. Because for this guy to walk up and be like, oh, you've got to move. I want that seat right now. Like, that's a obnoxious and there's no reason to act like that. Especially when there's seats literally all around the original poster and there's plenty of spots that they could have sat and had no problems. So good for the original poster for standing up for themselves. Because personally, based on the way that guy was acting, I don't think you were rude at all and I honestly think that guy absolutely had it coming. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Everyone in my job got mad when I took charge simply because no one else would do it. But as a result, they all complained to corporate, stating that I was rude and nasty in the time of crisis and that I was not kind in the face of disaster. So I decided to maliciously comply by not stepping up to the plate when another accident happened, resulting in all those people who complained about me getting fired. Here's what happened. So about 14 years ago, I worked for a major petroleum company in Indianapolis. Over my four years there, I applied myself and I gained enough
enough knowledge to be more knowledgeable than most of the senior guys. Well, one day stuff hit the fan, and we were looking at a potential major spill because the packing in a pump had failed. Nobody was doing anything, and I'm the kind of person who likes to take charge, so I just started barking orders. Now, you have to understand, this would have been an EPA nightmare, so there was no time to be nice. Well, the other employees went and complained, and I was called into the manager's office and was told about the complaints, how I was just barking orders and I didn't ask nicely. He told me that I did the right thing and that next time, if it wasn't going to be a major issue, to just give them enough rope to hang themselves. So I thought to myself, okay. So the next time I saw that they had the valve set in such a way that two soap tanks would overflow. And while it's not an EPA big deal, it would bring scrutiny from the health, environmental, safety, and security decision of our company. I mentioned to them that they might want to check the valve lineup because something just didn't look right. Well, they told me to mind my own business. And as it was time for me to go home, I called the manager from my car and said that you should probably start heading to the terminal because two tanks are about to overrun. I tried to tell them, but they told me to mind my own business. Well, I didn't get halfway home before a neighbor to the facility came knocking on the door saying liquid was overflowing two tanks. As the only first responder not involved in the incident, I had to return to the facility and supervise a cleanup until corporate came in about three hours later. All three were put on probation and then eventually fired for more screw-ups. Now, the beauty of this was that after that incident, they were told to follow what I said explicitly and never again complain that someone doesn't say please and thank you in a crisis. They all hated me until the day they left. And you want to know why? It's because I was the only person to take charge when no one else would step up and do it. Honestly, good for the original poster for sticking to their values and doing exactly what they need to do in a time of crisis. Like here you are stepping up to the plate and taking care of something that could have been massive. And as a point of reference, the EPA stands for Environmental Protection Agency. And I'm willing to bet you definitely don't want them knocking on your door, especially if there's a major spill from a petroleum company. It's also really funny to me that these co-workers are like, wow, I can't believe you talked to us like that. You were so mean about how you said that. And it's like, what are you talking about? This is literally an emergency and you want me to be like super nice to you? Like, I'm sorry, but we need to get stuff done because if we don't, it's going to be tragic and we're all going to lose our jobs or potentially even worse. Like, are you serious right now? It sounds like the coworkers were just being super soft and there was like no reason to be so offended over what this guy was doing. So truly good for this guy for stepping up and doing what needed to get done because clearly nobody else had the guts to step up when it counted. Am I the jerk for getting my neighbor and client banned by all local babysitters after they tried to slander my name online? Here's what happened. So over the holidays, I got the chance to go to the Caribbean with my neighbors as their nanny. My parents were not thrilled, but it was after Christmas, so they let me go. The deal was pretty simple. It was 10 days at an all-inclusive resort. I would share a room with the kids and take care of them for seven days and nights. In return, I got $500 and three days to myself, and the rooms would be adjoined. My parents insisted I get everything in writing, so there was no mistake. Basically, we agreed that I would work two days and take one day off. And I would do this over and over again. And I thought to myself, no problem. And I even checked out the included activities with any excursions that I might like. On my third day off, I had planned to go scuba diving. I got up early and went on my excursion. When I got back, the parents were mad that I had left without warning. But I reminded them that we had a deal. And they said they had met another couple there and were going golfing and that I screwed up their plans. But I seriously don't know why they made plans on one of my free days. They were upset all the way home. When we got back, they posted how irresponsible I was. One of the other families called me to get my side of the story, so I sent them a picture of the deal that we agreed on. They said they knew I wouldn't do what I was being accused of. Then they started commenting on the post made by my neighbors, and my parents also joined in on this. But I think everyone thought they were just protecting me. So now it's a big deal, and everyone knows that they tried to change our deal without talking to me, and some of the other babysitters or their parents are now saying they won't babysit for my neighbors anymore. Now, I feel bad about it because they paid a lot for my vacation. And if they had asked about it, I would have probably switched my excursion to the last day. Anyways, they are upset that I narked them out, which I didn't even do. They said that I could have talked to them if I had a problem, even though I'm not the one that made this public. So honestly, am I the jerk in this scenario? What should I do? It is so rich of them to be like, wow, if you had a problem, you could have talked to me in private. Meanwhile, they post all this garbage online.
online about you not doing your job. Like, seriously? What in the world is going on? They called you irresponsible and all this other stuff online, and then they get upset like, wow, you didn't have to make this public. It's like, what are you talking about? You tarnish my reputation. That is not okay, and you're not going to get away with that. And here's the thing. They completely went back on your deal. I mean, thank goodness you had everything in writing to some degree. I'm assuming you had some kind of text message of some kind, or something to basically notate that, yes, you had this agreement, and this is how it was specifically set up. So for them to turn their backs on you and start posting about you online, while simultaneously being upset that their side of the story was completely wrong, and they were actually just trying to screw you over, in my opinion, is completely hilarious. They literally want to be both victim and executioner in the same sentence. If they wanted to renegotiate the terms of your agreement, they should have brought you along and said, hey, we need to change just a few things. And then, just like any other reasonable person in the world, you probably would have been like, sure, we can change that up. That's not that big of a deal. But instead, they're like, wow, on your day off, we went golfing and you messed things up for us. It's like, no, I didn't. You did that yourself. These parents are weird and honestly, none of this is your fault. So truly, you are not the jerk and I really think your neighbors got exactly what they deserved. Am I the jerk for lying to my family for two years by not revealing that me and my husband bought a house by the lake? Because right now, after they found out, they're calling us greedy and are demanding the address to that house, with my mom even asking for spare keys. And right about now, I'm seriously unsure of what to do. Here's what happened. A few years ago, my husband and I told our relatives that we wanted to buy a country house by the lake. In our country, almost everybody lives in apartments, so our families were very happy. My mother immediately decided that she wanted to arrange a vegetable garden in the yard of this house. And my husband's sister said that it would be a great place where she could take her children for the summer. My sister started fantasizing about family picnics, and my husband's brother jokingly said that this would be a good place to get drunk on the weekends. Well, when we heard all of this, we were both terrified. We did not want any of this in the slightest. We wanted to have a place where we could truly feel at home, a place where we could rest, and a place where we could arrange everything to our taste. We wanted a place where we could raise our future children, where we could have peace and quiet and not deal with family squabbles. In the end, we decided to tell them that the deal had fallen through and there would be no house. After all, it is none of their business. We were the only ones buying the house and it has nothing to do with them. Plus, we just didn't need to tell them anything. We only told the truth to our best friends who we were sure would not spoil anything. The house is really beautiful and my friends and I often go there on the weekends. Well, two years have passed by and my sister found out about the house by accident because one of my friends posted a photo from there. Now our families are furious and call us greedy. Many of the relatives don't want to talk to us until we give them the address, with my mom even asking for spare keys. And this is exactly the hype that we tried so hard to avoid. Now, I don't think we're jerks, but my husband is starting to hesitate about what we should have done. So truly, are we the jerks in this scenario? What should I do? Not only are you not the jerks, but if you seriously want to keep your peace, I would not give out any spare keys to your house. I don't even care if it's your mother. Literally, don't give it to anybody. Here's the thing. If your relatives don't want to talk to you until you give them access to the house, then I think that's probably like a big problem solved. These people see this house as a party house or as a house that they can slowly take over. But this isn't some family property that anybody can just show up to. This isn't a place where someone can live and get drunk at on the weekends. This is your place and your place alone. And literally no one else in your family has any say over what you can and can't do with this house. Like with the way they're acting, I don't blame you for a second for not wanting to tell them about your purchase. Because right now they're giving you this weird ultimatum of how they're just not going to talk to you unless you give them the address. Like, I'm sorry, that's insane behavior and you do not owe them that kind of information. It seems like your extended family tries to claim anything anyone else gets in their life and this is one of those situations where they're like, wait a second, what about me? But then I would want to ask back, yeah, exactly, what about you? You don't own this house and there's a reason I didn't tell you about it. Because literally, this is the way you would act. And I don't know about the original poster, but I would not want family like this over all the time at a place that I would want to call home. So no, you are definitely not the jerk. Your extended family is incredibly selfish and very entitled, and I simply don't blame you for not wanting to deal with them in the slightest. Would I be the jerk if I decided to break up with my boyfriend after he didn't do anything for my birthday or even Valentine's Day? Because right now, that's the reality I'm faced with, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for nearly four years, and we've been living together for almost
almost three. It was fine until March of 2023, and that is where we kind of started struggling. Now, my birthday is a little more than a week before Valentine's Day, so I don't ever expect anything for Valentine's Day because of how close they are together. However, I made it clear at the beginning of the relationship that if we don't celebrate my birthday, then I would like to do something for Valentine's Day instead. My boyfriend has always struggled with getting gifts, even for his own family. So, I've been trying to be patient and understanding with his lack of gifts on all gift-giving holidays. There have been birthdays and Christmas where I've gotten absolutely nothing, and sometimes I get something small. This year, however, he didn't even bother booking the day off of work. I even reminded him before his job's booking deadline to book my birthday and our anniversary off. I hardly even saw him during my birthday, and I went out and bought my own cake and spent my night completely alone. His mom got me a little gift, and honestly, I didn't even care what it was. I was just happy that someone was thinking of me for my birthday. I hope that maybe he would make it up to me on Valentine's Day because he was kind of talking about it like he had something planned. I felt like an idiot for even getting my hopes up because I saw him for a whopping 10 minutes that day. He spent the morning out with his friends and when I came home, he was asleep with a brand new PS5 downloading some games. He said that he was going to get groceries while out with his friends but didn't get anything but the PS5. So he bought a gift for himself on Valentine's Day. Any plans that he talked about just didn't happen like usual. Now, it doesn't even matter if I tell him exactly what I want. He's not going to do it or get it. Then, even during the time leading up to my birthday, he was only talking about things that he wants to get himself like a PS5. So honestly, am I being too greedy by being upset about this? I'm just tired of feeling like I'm not as important to him as he is to me. Would it be okay if I broke up with him over this? What should I do? I think you hit the nail on the head with that last sentence because from the outside looking in, it really seems like he does not prioritize you at all. Like he just straight up ignored your birthday and Valentine's Day, even though you've made it very clear that if we're not going to celebrate one of them, then you want to celebrate the other one. And also, you're not asking that much of him. You're literally asking for the bare minimum in a relationship and I seriously just don't think it's that hard to try and make plans for your significant other in this way. Especially for Valentine's Day, like there is no good excuse for that. That's a very famous holiday, at least in America, and there's no reason he should have missed that at all. Like, the bar is so low in this scenario, it's practically on the ground. So no, of course you're not the jerk in this situation. Your boyfriend is being absolutely inconsiderate of your feelings and of the holidays that are in front of him, and if I was in your shoes, I would definitely be reconsidering everything that I know about him. Several entitled customers demand that I take pictures of their table that I'm serving, even when I'm incredibly busy doing my job. And I'm honestly so sick of it that I'm now still starting to say no. Here's what happened. Okay, so things are really starting to get out of hand. I don't mind taking people's photos. If it adds to their night and I have the time, why not? But it's now multiple tables at night and it's now rarely an appropriate time. No exaggeration, but four out of the five tables that ask me do so when I'm carrying a stack of dirty dishes or a tray full of drinks or when I'm running food to another table and I'm very clearly and visibly busy. Half the time, it's a table in someone else's section, just like a few nights ago. I was running drinks during the rush for another server, and after I delivered one table's drinks, they immediately asked me to take their picture. I still had multiple drinks on my tray, and when I told them that they'd have to wait for their server to return, one woman legitimately scoffed. I've had people attempt to interrupt me while I'm taking another table's order, and I've had people interrupt me while in the middle of taking their table's order, just to take a stinking photo. Last night, I reached my limit. I was passing by a table in another section, and a man grabbed my arm and handed me his phone. Now, I knew what he wanted, but instead of acquiescing to his non-request, I slipped the phone in my apron and I kept walking. I went and stood in the kitchen for 60 seconds, just enough time for him to sweat, and of course, he was waving frantically from the table as I approached. His dining companions were cracking up, but he was not happy. He said to me, I wanted you to take our picture, not walk off with my phone. So I looked at him and I said, oh really? You just handed me your phone and didn't say anything, so I assumed it was a gift. I placed his phone on the table and then I walked away. And of course, I immediately told my co-workers. And at the end of the night, the server told me that the same guy later did the exact same thing to him. And the server told the guy that he would have thought the guy had learned his lesson by now, considering the first server the guy did that to walked off with his phone. And the guy was not amused by that either. And then 99% of the time, it's older folks who are doing this, clearly in their late 50s and up, which is prime time for this kind of obnoxious, entitled, oblivious behavior. I know it's important for them to document every activity for their Facebook friends,
sounds, but it is not my priority at all. And I'm honestly so sick of it. Yeah, that seriously sounds really obnoxious. Like these people are being very disruptive and they're grabbing you right when you literally have no time to do anything for them. Whether you're delivering food or at least helping another customer or trying to get somebody's order to have them come up and be like, hey, can you take our picture without any kind of acknowledgement that maybe you're a little too busy for that is incredibly rude. I think the way you handle that one guy, though, is absolutely brilliant. This guy didn't even ask you for a photo. He just handed you his phone and just expected you to what? Read his mind? Like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm not a telepath. I can't read your thoughts because trust me, your thoughts are probably stupid. So truly good for you for starting to say no to these people, because honestly, I think it's time for you to put your foot down because these people have been very disrespectful of your time and completely ignoring the fact that you're on the clock. And in my opinion, you absolutely do not deserve to be treated like that in the slightest. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.